Hey, beautiful people. Welcome back to Love and Light. It's your girl C, Tiana, Mamacita. You know who it is. Welcome back, or if this is your first time, welcome. Love and Light is a podcast about life. I try my best to be, share, and experience love and light in all of its forms. As we navigate life, why not process things through the lens of love? This space is me documenting my life through that lens and building community rooted in authenticity. Today's topic is dance, movement, expression, the magic of music just moving through you and the power of dance as an expression and art. I am honestly so excited to be joined by the beautiful, talented, ethereal dancer and artist, Cami Arboles. Thank you so much for joining me, Mama. How are you? I'm, I'm better now. That I'm here. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It, you are the first person on this podcast that I don't like personally know. Oh my gosh, what an honor. Thank you for so, trusting me. <laughs> of course. No, we have some interesting connections. Um, I don't want to say names because they're not here right now. Um, but I came across your page because a person who went to Yale with you is a part of the prep program and shared one of your poll videos. And I went on their page and was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And then I started following you. And so many of my friends from Yale are connected with you. And I was like, wait, this is unreal. So I felt like that much more comfortable reaching out to someone who I had no idea. And I was like, maybe she'll see our mutuals. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think I know exactly who that person is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, mean, I, I just connected the dots in my mind. That's so cool. The internet can be really cool in that way. Like, making connections with people that you otherwise like maybe would not have. No, for sure. And then the other person I know that they're okay with me saying their name, Carolina Arena. She went to, I want to say it's either middle or high school with you. Yeah, we went to high school mm -hmm. together. Yeah, you went to high school together. And she's one of my really close friends because we went to college together. Oh my God, wait, that's so crazy. What a small world. Right? Aww. Oh, what my character. soul is like smiling. What a small world. That's so right? cool. I loved it. It made me so happy because I was just like this. Like, I couldn't have scripted this any better. You know, right. what I mean? you can't. The synchronicity, the universe was like really just. It needed it to happen. Yeah. Cool. So I have done my research, right? But is there any specific way that you want to introduce yourself to the people? Anything you want them to know about you off bat? Um, oh gosh, what <laughs> do I want you to know? Um, I, it's okay. I have no like, idea. No pressure. No pressure. Um, hey guys, I'm Cami. I don't know. I, I, I should be able to answer the, this question, but okay. maybe we'll, we'll just jump right in. <laughs> I love it. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, so let's talk about kind of our journey with dance and movement very broadly. So, uh -huh. just telling me that you got started in musical theater and that's kind of your main occupation yeah so actually i i'm a singer so so Ooh. i i've been a singer my whole life it's crazy now because my life is pole dancing but like i mean I'm, I'm like my first love in my life and still like my greatest love of all is singing and, and music so when i was really young i um just started singing like in choir at church like was singing in all the choirs i did that all throughout high school i would canter i went to catholic school for like 12 years um, for elementary school and high school, and I would always canter at the masses. I do choir, um, and then I really wanted to do musical theater because I'm like, oh my god, they sing. And then um, I figured out that oh, if I want to do musical theater, I guess I have to like learn how to dance and like act as well. Yeah. Um, so when I was like, I think I was t like ten, I was in the fifth grade, and the the school play was Willy Wonka, like or like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the musical. And I just like went out for it. And I was like, okay, maybe I'll be lucky and I'll like get cast as an Oompa Loompa or something. And it ended up being cast as Charlie. And oh I was like, that was my big break. And I just, I was always, I think I've always been like a very creative person in my own world. I'm a Pisces, so it's all, that's very Pisces of me. Oh, yes. yes um, I feel you. <laughs> you know how it be. So like, I would always just be, like, I would just lock myself in my room for hours, and I would play, like, Mariah Carey albums and, like, try and copy her or play, like, the Wicked Broadway musical cast recording and, like, just and mimic singers for hours and hours and hours. So, I, first and foremost, like, I'm a singer. So, like, I'm a musician. So, like, mm. music is just, like, 
so important to me and I think that feeds into like my movement and stuff but yeah like I would by no means ever like call myself a dancer first like mm-hmm. I was always like not a like dancer dancer type like there would mm-hmm. be girls that you know musical theater that like kick their face and people like legit like you know ballet training I was never really that but I'm very I'm a very musical person just because I'm, I'm a singer and um yeah like I just singing all throughout high school as in choir I would like just do musicals and stuff like that and then at Yale actually I studied opera um, through uh, like Yale School of Music. I had a professor there who t- taught me an opera. But I like, even though I was trained, I have that classical training. Like, I really love singing more. Like, like I like I like really soulful music, like R and B and stuff like that. And I also, when I was at Yale, I sang in an acapella group called Shades, and they sing like gospel, soul, R and B music and stuff like that. So like, I, I'm a very soulful person because of that. But basically. Yeah, so the way I got into dancing was musical theater, but the way I got into musical theater was through singing. And so, like, music and singing, like, that is, I think, like, pretty much at the heart of, like, everything I do. Yeah. Wow, that's so interesting. It's very, it's all interwoven. And it's actually a little bit of the reverse for me because I would always say I'm a dancer first. But I went to a performing arts middle school for theater. Um, Mm -hmm. And... I ended up moving into middle school, so I wasn't there the full career, but that was my passion was like, I really like dancing and I have personality, like put me on stage. And so Mm -hmm. through dance, I was like, oh, I want to be an actress. And like, I really enjoy seeing live performances. So let me be on stage. And so we have a little bit of the opposite there, but it's always been like, the creativity has always been the driving force in Um, how I navigate so cool I love it that's so funny I love that for us yes Uh, (laughs) so this is off topic now I'm just curious so what is going on singing wise is that definitely like something that you just want to have kind of for cami and you just put it out to the world as you want or is that like a business that you're developing as well you know it's so weird because so basically my whole life pretty much I've been like hustling because I'm like I want to be like I want to be on Broadway right so like I spent all of my like a good part of my senior year at Yale like taking the train to New York and auditioning for agents and um casting directors stuff like that in New York City and I eventually got signed to like my dream you know agency in New York City and this was like the last week of February and they like signed me all across the but yeah and then literally a week later everything shut down I was sent home stuff like that so like my whole life pretty much I'm like this is my dream like be a you know Broadway star sing and eight shows a week like that was really my dream and it's crazy because now I've really ever since you know COVID hit ever since my senior spring at Yale was kind of you know canceled because of the pandemic obviously like I've really just right I've literally just like let the universe flow for me Mm -hmm. and I I have to tell you, if you had told me, you know, six months ago that like I would be supporting myself full time by like sharing pole with people and teaching pole and yoga and stuff like that, I would just have been like, that's great. Like I would have never seen that coming. Yeah. So, so it's really just like, I can't even predict where my pole journey will take me. I cannot predict where my music journey, my singing journey will take me. All I can do for now is just like, trust place my trust in the universe and like just spread joy love positivity and my hard work everywhere I go and honestly just trust in the universe I don't even not that I don't set goals for myself because I do but it's just like right now there's just so much in the air so much is so unpredictable that like I can't even predict like what's going to be a business for me what's a profession I kind of just flow I just go with the flow and it's worked really well for me these past couple months. So I'm just so grateful to like be where I am and every day wake up and like have something to look forward to is one day at a time kind of thing. So I know I didn't really answer your question, but literally because because I don't have an answer. I really, truly just go with the flow and place my trust in the, in the firepower. I fully support that. No, it makes sense. Like you have goals and you know your passions, but you're not putting yourself on some sort of timeline. Yeah. Mm-hmm. that makes a lot of mm-hmm. sense so let's because this is like a very I guess recent life change almost for you right aside from COVID like actually being able to fully support yourself through pole and dance mm-hmm. um how did that happen can you give me a little play-by-play as to like how this business got started 
Yes. So let me like trace way back. So I started pull about a year ago. I started pull about a year ago. I started pull like actually I know exactly what day it was. It was like August 30th, 2019. It was like I think my it was like my first day of classes senior year at Yale and I had gone to this pole studio um in New Haven called Pole Fly and I'd taken aerial classes there like on the hoop and the silks but I'd never done a pole class because I was just like kind of scared and then I honestly just thought you know what screw it like I'm just gonna go take a pole class so I did and then I became so addicted and I found myself like squeezing in pole class whenever I could like I arranged my whole second semester senior year schedule like <laughs> around like being cool. able to take a lot of pole classes I know I just like, got really addicted and then like I came home the pandemic hit and I was really missing the pole so I got a pole at home and it really became like my therapy it became like my healing because there's just like so much uncertainty I was devastated over the loss of like you know my senior year at Yale I was so yeah. so sad about that and like I, I knew every single day I could at least like wake up and just go dance on the pole, like learn something new on the pole. And it just like literally gave me a reason to wake up every morning. I'm not even kidding. That's so it just became very important. So I got my pole like around March or April. I was, I was like practicing every day and I grew a lot in that time. Then, okay, so what really happened to me, I, I, I graduated Yale May 18th. And then the day after that, I had my Yale cap and gown. And I filmed this video of me like basically stripping in my Yale cap and gown. I had like eight inch heels on and like yes, a fit it. underneath the cap and gown. And I just like did a dance on the pole. It's like literally a 30 second video. I strip everything off and just dancing on the pole. Okay, this video and I, the caption was something like, ah, oh, you like just got my Ivy League degree yesterday. Mm -hmm. Like, congrats class of 2020. And this video like went viral. Um, like all these like meme accounts reposted it, stuff like that. So literally i think like on my personal instagram account i must have had like you know it's like a thousand to maybe like two thousand followers or something like mm -hmm. i don't have that many followers it's just like normal account and then like in a couple days it grew to like ten thousand and then like i had like fourteen thousand and like fifteen thousand and it's just been kind of like steadily growing since then because like that video i think really put like my skills and like i guess my personality on the map <laughs> yeah no, it really does. That's one thing I can definitely say about your page when I was scrolling through it is that, you know, especially because I don't know you, I really only had your page to get a frame of reference about like who you are and the kind of energy you yeah. bring. And I feel like now that I'm speaking to you, your page like very authentically reflects who you are and how you show up. Oh, <laughs> thank you. That's nice to hear. That's nice to hear because I always, always try and just be me on my page. Like, yeah, no, I feel you. Like, same. That's huge for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Social media is such a scam that, like, but it's also yeah. such a beautiful tool if you use it as that. You know what I mean? And I feel exactly. like that's exactly you. Yes, like. I view it as a source of inspiration now. I used to get anxiety. Sometimes I still get anxiety from it. I mean, I, I, like, it's just constant overload sometimes. But, like, now I just, I follow people that I love, that are inspiring for me and, like, elevate my daily life and don't make me feel like I'm being bogged down, you know? And that's why I love social media now. Now I do. And then, basically, it's because of my Instagram and, like, my social media that I've made so many connections and gotten to, like, start teaching people and, like, launching. Like, I, I run... Um, a kind of a holistic wellness program for women and femmes called uh, the Mind Body Spirit Collective. So that's like a 21 day program that I launched. That's I've been really really able to enroll people in it simply because I you know reach out to people on Instagram and connect. And so really like through that program and through teaching privates and stuff like that, like I wanted to connect with so many incredible women and just like help them on their like movement journey. And that gives me so much energy and like so much joy. I love that. Joy, that word is one of my favorite words because I'm such a like happiness is great, but joy is just joy is another different. level. It hits different. Like I can't yeah. <laughs> it's just another level. And something that I was actually talking about, I did an episode about confidence and how mm -hmm. dance has always been helpful and harmful sometimes in yeah. my confidence, especially because I was a ballerina and all of those things and not having the typical ballerina body and not being the best yeah. in the class, things like that. Not that people were putting it on me, but I took that 
and internalized it and it hit my confidence. I say all of this to say, we ended up talking about how in dance class, all they're worried about and all they're really teaching you is technique. And of course that's important so you don't get hurt, but they never actually emphasize the idea that you're supposed to enjoy moving this way. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to enjoy coming to class, enjoy doing the adagio. Like these are things that are supposed to bring you joy. Yes. And that's never for us. That wasn't the environment or the experience. And I was like, wow, you know, in college, I started a Latin dance team. And that for me was the first time where I truly was like, I want people to look good because looking good when I perform makes me happy. But I want to actually enjoy coming to rehearsal. Yeah. Choreographing and have joy be the root of like movement in my life. Yes. So I was just thinking about that. And I guess I'll bring that to a question for you about pole. Like the joy obviously was before the technique because you planned your whole second semester as you were still yes. the technique. Where do you fall now in terms of like when you're connecting with people and really emphasizing that joy over perfection? Ooh, how, so the question is, how do I emphasize joy over perfection? Yeah, for yourself or for your clients. I don't know exactly what you call them. Your Yeah, my students, my clients, yeah, students. My, my goddesses. I literally I call them all goddesses. Um, so here's the thing. Like, I love teaching because I always love just hyping people up, like making them feel good. Like, that makes me feel good. when I, when I someone If I can make someone else happy, then that makes me happy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, when I do my lessons, but I just be hyping up my students the whole time. I often get... <laughs> I, I'll, I'll be yelling, screaming, like, yes, girl, like, you bet. Like, and, I, and I'll literally I lose it. my voice after a full day of teaching. Cause like, I just, I just get so much energy by like watching people like learn new things or learn a new skill and like seeing mm -hmm. how that makes a difference for them. Like that makes me so happy. So, so I'm always, I mean, it's always like joy first, like liberation mm -hmm. first at least for me, like when I teach pole, cause it can be scary. I mean, I was so intimidated yeah. in my first pole class. I was like, oh, I'm gonna look so bad. I don't know what I'm doing. So like, I always tell, I always tell my students like, like it just, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a judgment free zone. Like you do mm -hmm. you, I'm here to hype you up. I'm here to help you meet your goals. Like, so it's always joy first, like always, I, I guess. Yeah, that's what I would say. And then for me, I guess in my movement practice, like. I really view, at least for me, pole dancing is like, is, is a catharsis for me. Like, mm -hmm. it's just, it's just like, so, so many days, like I'll have a cloudy, foggy head or I'll just like need to get something off my chest. And like, I'll just kind of put on a song that mirrors what I'm feeling or like reflects what I'm feeling. And I'll just like build movement around that song. And it's like so healing for me to do that. And then I'll just like, keep it to myself sometimes or sometimes I'll share it. And mm -hmm. Either way, it's just like a very healing release for me. Definitely. I love that. That, so I feel like we've spoken about it, but I'm just going to ask it directly. How has dance and movement overall like impacted not only your life, but how you approach life, if it has? I think something I've learned a lot, especially like through my movement journey, I guess there's like, there's a lot of big things but one big thing is that like progress is non-linear sometimes like yeah especially with the human body which is just a complex changing thing like there are some days where i'm getting all my strong flexible poses and i'm killing it and i'm getting all the moves and it's great mm -hmm. and then maybe a couple days later i'm feeling a little bit off and i don't nail the moves like i did the practice before I don't get upset. I just say, okay, that's where my body's at today. Thank you, body, for everything you do. I express gratitude for what I can do today. And, like, that's okay. Like, progress is nonlinear. Some days you take, like, 10 steps forward. Some days a couple steps back. Like, and that's also life, too. That's literally just, like, life. Like, there are highs and lows. It's not always a perfect linear trajectory in your life. So I feel like that's s such a big thing that, like, the poll has taught me. And then also just, like, something Paul has really taught me is like the importance of like taking breaks and coming back to things because like sometimes I'll be I'll be training a move on pole like every day for a couple weeks and I'll like still not get it and I'll just be like, okay I'll put it away for a month or two and then a month or two I come back to it and like get it on the first try that's awesome so it's taught me lessons and just you know stepping away from something and then come back to it and see how it feels in the body so there's that and then the other thing that you know pole and movement has taught me is just like 
viewing my body as like art instead of or, or viewing my my body as like a story like I, I think of the body honestly as a story like when you think of a story like a story is not good a story is not bad it's just a story and there are yeah there are protagonists in the story there are antagonists in the story there are heartbreaks there are wins there are triumphs in the story so like kind of like the progress is non-linear thing this story has ups and downs so like i just view my body as a story and i am the author so i have the power to like write my own story every day through my body through my movement through what i choose to do that's so beautiful and so like eloquently said mm, thank you um i think then because i'm thinking your like dance experience has really allowed you to like build and find community right mm -hmm. there to say okay cool mm -hmm. so then would you say that like your dance experience you feel is more internal or external or like how do those things come into play um it's both because like a lot of like the practice i do is like pretty much especially since quarantine like it's self-practice it's like self-teaching yeah. almost in a way um but i have like found an amazing community of pole dancers here in los angeles that have become some of my like close friends over the past couple months so that's also been really special and also just like the community on social media is so supportive um the support and love that we give each other and receive from each other is like so inspiring mm -hmm. so it, it goes both ways but that what i think i love the most about the pole dancing community is like everyone's just so supportive and creative like it it's so uh, it's such an uplifting community it's uh, unlike anything i've ever experienced it's like such an honor to be a part of it oh that's so nice I mean, I can feel that again, even just from like going through your page and seeing like one, hearing how people recording you hype you up and then <laughs> hearing how you hype other people up. Yeah. It's like, wow. Like there really is just like a you do you. I would love for you to thrive, like things of that. Yes, nature. Totally. That's so awesome. So besides joy, because we were talking about that, yeah. when I, because I think about this, and I don't want to overuse the word, but I definitely feel like one of the main things that I feel when I'm dancing is joy, even if I'm going into the session to express another emotion. Does that uh -huh. make sense? So like, even if I'm sad and I like throw on some contempt and I'm just like moving, I'm going there to like release that energy from my body. And by the mm -hmm. end of the session, if not joyous, it's always like cathartic for me. Yeah. Like, Right. And I'm wondering, like, how is your experience with movement, not just with pole, but even with musical theater and taking classes before? How do those compare? Um, I feel like in both ways, especially when I'm singing, like I love singing and get so excited to sing a song because, like, you know, for that three minutes that I'm singing the song, I literally just get like lost in a world like and at the end of the song, I'm sad to come out of that world. So it's like my own world that I construct and I'm like singing a song, telling a story. It's, it really feels the same way when I'm like dancing on the pole. Like I just step into like a higher version of myself or and a version of myself that's like so ready to like emote and express whatever's in the song mm -hmm. um, and like tell that story. So it, it feels, so it feels the same in both ways. That feels very like Pisces. And it's so like, Pisces. lost in your own world of Bro, it's, like it's just I'm like the Pisces <laughs> poster child like <laughs> oh yeah girl trust me I am with you like <laughs> it's so funny um that makes a lot of sense yeah I think I'm really interested by this idea of like cr using not even using but like viewing your body as a story because I think I've always you always hear like you're the author of your life, but I think to view your physical body, right? Like more than just, or yeah, more than just like the agency of like your actions, but like the physical things that you can do are also decisions in your story and are also writing your story that, I don't know. I don't know that I have much more to say about it other than it really intrigues me. Oh yeah. I mean, it's just like, I actually have a whole like unit about you know viewing your body just as a story in my like wellness program that I do 
because like my whole thing about like wellness is that it looks different for everybody and so like in order to figure out what works for you like you kind of need to do some research on the story of your body and like think about what your body is what it does how you feel in it every single day like and just like tap into that story like and that is different everyone's got a different story it's beautiful absolutely that so I'm curious now then do you feel like having a Latinx background and Latinx roots how does that influence the story of your body the story of Cami? yeah I mean obviously it's like my identity it's like who I am it's culturally like how I was raised and stuff like that Mm -hmm. and it's also interesting because like growing up I grew up in like a lot of predominantly white spaces like elementary school high school I mean Yale is a predominantly white institution so I like you know grew up in in spaces that were just predominantly not me like and that, that's okay yeah but I, I mean in a way that's a form of privilege because when you I like for it's just like learning you know how to code switch or whatever like yeah that's something the that you learn at a, capital that you get from yes institutions yep I'm with you exactly I mean you know yeah so like so I I know that I have that privilege and I think like I, I think about that like on, like honestly every single day because like I'm like oh I went to Yale now I'm pole dancing like like there's a like it, it sounds like weird but there's just a lot a lot of like privilege there. it's like okay like yeah I went to like this very elite institution like that like people are gonna view me differently because of that whether I like it or not um but as far as you know, how it's impacted like my identity formation and stuff like that I mean like it just that's, that's who I am so like of, of course it has I guess like mainly I think like for example like in terms of like body type like all the women in my family like are honestly just built curvy like Mm -hmm. they're just we we got like those that thick latina build i'm not i don't know how else to put it that's just the truth yeah voluptuous women all around no literally but i feel like so here's one thing like growing up i feel like in magazines i would look at like or on the television i would look at like really skinny like white girls like mm-hmm. really just like skinny white girls and I would look at them and and wish I looked like that and like wish I could be like that yeah and for so much of my life I felt that and I'm just like bro I'm just I'm always just gonna be like a thick built like like thicker built Latina woman like that is just who I am yeah and do honestly like pole dancing helped me like really love that part of myself because like I learned on the pole how to like make my body like make myself feel beautiful in my body and yeah. like embrace my curves because they help me make beautiful shapes or like embrace my muscles because they make me so strong and like mm-hmm. so honestly like the pole actually like really helped me embrace like that part of myself and who I am I love that I feel that so heavily right there's I think it's the same I have a similar experience with like salsa and bachata like latin yeah music, right um one cultural so for me like every time I hear that music I can always tie it to like a family gathering or like a specific Sunday morning when I was Uh, like blasting through the house right like very mm -hmm. typical Latinx staples I feel and for me like every time I'm dancing it's you know sometimes it's super simple but it really is just that joy of like I'm a part of something bigger than myself almost. Yes, you know? exactly. It sounds so cheesy to say, but that truly is like my experience. And it's why I love dance and movement so much. And I guess the reason, if I'm really thinking about it, that I separate those two is because I feel like when people think of dance, they think of like technique. Or yeah. I do because I grew up taking dance and you know to be a dancer you're normally someone who like has taken classes and has technique or someone who has a natural ability to storytell with your body yeah but even if you're don't have technique and you can't storytell like moving your body I think is for you right like it's great Mm -hmm. you can appreciate it but Mm -hmm. I think there's a power in literally just like moving your body the way you want to regardless yeah. of the technique regardless of the audience exactly i saw and i'm sad 
because senior year like got canceled, but you had a play that you were incorporating poll about Frida Kahlo. Yes. Talk to me about everything. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) So that was my senior thesis project at Yale. As a senior thesis project, I spent like basically two years researching, writing, and developing that piece. I was going to portray Frida Kahlo in a play about her life. Within there was music in it too. It was like this whole thing. So there was pole dancing in it and basically so like the thesis of the of the play, if you will, and also I guess like of Frida Kahlo's life was that she like alchemized beauty from pain. Like she was in so much pain and suffering, dealing with injuries for the majority of her life. Um but she made art and she made beauty out of it. Mm-hmm. So there was basically what left her injured, um and disabled for the majority of her life was that she was in a bus accident when she was very young. And the bus accident in, actually involved, you know, like the, when you're standing on a bus, you're like holding on to like a handrail like this, yeah. like a, a hand, a pole, a mm-hmm. pole. A, a so pole. no, literally that is a, a pole that like, it got like splintered through the metal and then like severed her through her midsection. Oh my God. So it was like a pole that like caused this destruction that actually you know left her bedridden that actually inspired her to create and make art for her life so conceptually in the in the play that whole sequence of the bus accident is portrayed through a pole dance that's amazing if that makes sense so that was why there was pole dancing in the play that is so cool though that sounds amazing and yeah, I, love- I was really excited about it. <laughs> I feel like you should still record that, though. Because you had it oh. choreographed, I'm assuming, or no? Yeah, I did. And you know what? I'm so much better at pull now that I could probably make it way better. <laughs> That's I'm not true. even kidding. No, we love growth. I fully yes, that. Yes, we love growth. We love growth in this house, right? Um, mm-hmm. No, I saw the video of you with the skirt. I don't. Does the skirt have, like, a cultural name? I feel like... Honestly, that was that was a skirt that I bought for the the Frida Kahlo costume. Yeah. So Frida Kahlo kind of infused like she would wear so she would wear those long skirts because she contracted polio when she was very young and it left one of her legs longer than the other. Oh, so wow. she had like one leg was stunted growth and the other leg was like you know normal length. Yeah. And so she wore long skirts to like hide her legs. Oh, but I see but that. people wouldn't see that they're different, um, different lengths. So she would wear those long, beautiful skirts. So that's actually like a like a flamenco skirt. Mm-hmm. And I was dancing in that in that video. I was dancing to Rosalia. She's yeah. a Spanish singer. Yeah, and so that was like from her first. Album. And now she does more kind of pop stuff. But that was from her first album, where it was really just like flamenco style singing. That's so beautiful. Yeah, no, I saw that and I was like, oh my gosh, like of all the ways that the universe aligned for this to happen, right? With like our mutuals and finding your page and, you know, finding out that you're Latinx. I was also like, it's Latinx Heritage Month. Like this is beautiful. So like interweaving all of that and really thinking about that. And I was like, it's, I think it's so powerful specifically for Latina women when you have for mostly women of color, but I would say black and Latinx women specifically who are over-sexualized or hyper-sexualized. And, you know, pole is inherently an over-sexualized dance style. And even salsa and bachata, like if you're not from that culture, being so like up against each other from an outsider's point of view, people will sexualize it. And it's like, oh, I'm dancing with my cousin, but (laughs) <laughs> this is just how we dance you know what I mean exactly. I was thinking about that and like the power of I guess like reclaiming your power you know what I mean I saw that you yes. had a point about like the male gaze and reclaiming your power and I was like yes everything yes like I love this yeah. <laughs> honestly yeah 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 that's really important to me especially like I don't know I always think about uh, I like double triple overthink things but like i mean i've always been that way i've always been thinking and writing about that i've just always been that way 
Yeah. Um, so especially like when my, I guess when my Instagram or like my identity or whatever, what I do really took a, a way towards pole dancing. I like, am very, you know, I just like, I just like to think about like what it means, how it comes across, like what are the optics of this? What does it mean for me? What does it mean for women? What does it mean for women's like the, you know, expression of femininity and of like sensuality. Mm-hmm. And like, it was so interesting because the the day that I made that post, so like that was um the first time I got like that stage pole, set it up outside. And it was just like for me and my girlfriend, like we were just gonna go pole dance at the beach for us, like yeah. just for us to like feel, you know, yeah, like we're just having a fun day at the beach. beach. It was yeah. literally for us. And so many men are I mean it's it's like of course you'd look. There's like people doing pole dance at the beach. Like of course yeah, you're gonna like stop by and look. But like I was just shook because and I should have expected this, but like just so many dudes would come by and like take out their phone and start filming. Some would even like throw ones at us as if it were a strip club. I'm like, okay, I'll take your money. <laughs> now truthfully, but, but like that makes me uncomfortable for you because it's like this is not for you. Exactly. <laughs> and it's just like Right. And it's in what through that moment, I realized I'm like, okay, it's crazy. Because even though I can declare that I'm dancing for me, because it makes me happy, it will always also be under the male gaze, whether I like it or not. Mm -hmm. And that's just a fact of life. Yeah, no, that's super true. Which is a sad fact of life. But that's super, super true. Right. How, because you, I love how we align, but you seem very intentional in everything that you do, right? It's, things happen like by coincidence, but there's always a purpose in when you approach something. And so I'm wondering, how do you, have you intentionally thought about like your Latinx culture and like your Latinidad in your movements and like how you express yourself? Or has there ever been like, I guess, what is the relationship between those two, if there is? Um, my Latinidad and my movement? I don't know. I've honestly never considered it. Mm. Because, <laughs> like, I, I've, never, I've never really considered it that way. At least, like, me being Latina and me being a pole dancer, like, they exist together. Mm-hmm. Like, like, I am Latina. I'm a pole dancer. Yeah. Do they influence each other? I've honestly, like, I, I don't think, I, that, that's weird, I've never, I've never, like, really thought of that. I honestly, in so many cases, I just think of myself as, like, a vessel for my art, and sometimes I just, like, take away, like, my identity from it, I guess. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like, I don't know, yeah. I've never really, I've never really thought about this question before. That's okay. I don't really have an answer for you. No, that's okay. Because I don't think, because I don't think they, they, I do view it as, like, something that, like, I think about all the time, like, oh my god, like, um. Uh, I'm 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 a Latina on the pole. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really no, for that. sure. That yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. That's totally I mean, what, what I do think about though is like, I mean, there's always like the stereotype of like you know the like Spitfire like sexy Latina whatever like you know I don't know sometimes like I'll get I'll get DMs or something of like men trying to like talk mm-hmm. to me in Spanish and be like. Uh, like be my I don't even want to get into it ah, but yeah. so I did <laughs> I know I it though like I know where it's going you know where it's going and so I'm just like okay like they're gonna they're gonna you know like view me as that stereotype and I'm just like that is what it is that's your own projection of me that's not like I, I'm me <laughs> yeah no that makes a lot of sense that yeah there's like no pressure on that I think about it because for me, like when I was finding, I guess what movement makes me feel best, it's very like social Latinx dancing. It's salsa, bachata, yes. merengue. You know, I'm trained in like ballet, tap, jazz, hip, like, yeah. Line. And it was fun as a kid, and I loved dancing, but I loved dancing because my mom loved dancing and she was a dancer, and like that was our way of connecting. And so growing up, like as much as I love dance because it's expression, I loved it because it was a fun way to like, yeah, you know, and that was always important. Yes. Um, but when I really was focusing on like what kind of dance makes me happy, what kind of dance mm-hmm. do I 
feel best in it's latinx dancing and i think it's because yes there there's more to it you know what i mean like there's that yes. for me so i was wondering if that at all came into play with pull um and if it didn't it's totally okay you know what i do think okay you know there's something about like just like social latinx dancing that's like just very free and and liberating and it's kind of like all in the hips and it's a feeling yeah. it's a feeling like from within that you almost can't really teach it's yeah. just like you just grow it over time or it's just like i feel that on the pole it's like that kind of like it's just like that internal like rhythm or sensuality or just little fire yeah that I, it's like that same thing and it's like the moment of like oh of like improvisation like when you're dancing with somebody and you're like because in many ways sometimes i think of the pole as like my dance partner you know and it's like an inanimate object but in a way like i'm dancing with the pole I'm yeah, not dancing on the pole, but I dance with it. I use it, like, for my dancing. Yeah. So, it, in a way, there's, like, some similarities, you know? Definitely. Now that, I, now that I think of it. No, that's super, super true, because I'm also thinking, I think, well, I choreograph, right, because I founded my dance team, so I choreographed our performance pieces, but one thing, it was, like, my favorite part of the team always, is that we went to this place in... I want to say Anaheim, but it's not Anaheim. It's Alhambra. We went to this oh, yeah, yeah. We went to this place in Alhambra called La Granada. And it's, I've been there. I love Granada. And so it's we, amazing. We go and we're dancing. And it became like the team ritual where every oh. semester, the whole team, and like we would pay for it, we would go and social dance. And oh. you, you audition for the team, but you don't need experience. Right. Uh, especially in the first year. I started it literally as a first year, as a freshman. Oh. So I was not looking for people to be perfect. I was just looking for people that I individually knew I could work with uh -huh. um, because I was the teacher. And so going to social dancing was a great way for them to have other teachers and for mm. them to really understand the things that I was trying to express that I could not teach, right? And it was it. that environment, that feeling, the ability to pick up on someone's body. Yes. The importance of eye contact. And when you're social dancing, that's all it is because you watch these people, you move, they move beautifully, like yes. each other, but they have no idea what they're doing next. Yes. Working in tandem. It's that and yes. It's so beautiful. And so I definitely understand that dynamic with the pole because when you're improvising, you don't know what's gonna happen. You don't know, you know, how you're gonna interact with the pole or if you're gonna love the way that it moves or anything like that. But you have that yeah. synchronicity of we're gonna play off of each other today. Yes, exactly. I I think that's everything that I wanted to touch on. I feel really good about the things that we've discussed. Yay! Do you have, like, I just want to give you the floor one more time for any thoughts you have or any, I know you mentioned a couple of your programs that you maybe want to shine a light on one more time, anything like that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think one of my favorite things, so like, even though I was at Yale, I taught yoga. I just love like teaching and like sharing what I love with others. So. I, yeah, I really come into like doing my program. So like, I I run a program. I launched it this summer, but now it's like kind of you know really getting the ball rolling on it. It's called the Mind Body yeah. Spirit Collective, and it's a twenty one day uh, like holistic wellness program centered around like yoga and like mindful movement. Uh, twenty one days, and it's for women and femmes. And basically, what we do is like there's a big group chat, so everybody's in the program for mutual accountability we send each other updates and send daily affirmations in the group chat just to like really inspire and uplift each other um and then i do like an instagram live yoga class three times a week um and then on top of that you also get like an e-guide with journaling and like self-love self-confidence building exercises so that's like my program that i've been running it's going really well like every month is centered around deepening a different flexibility post so like this month is the splits Next month is going to be like heart opener, like heart chakra, back bends and stuff like that. That's beautiful. So yeah, so like I have that program. I obviously, I teach pole and yoga and flexibility privates. But, um, and then next month I'm also launching like two flexibility courses all on Zoom. So I'm just like 
Oh. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm I gotta make like a website or something. I don't know. I'm definitely in like a stage of figuring it out right now, but mm -hmm. so those are, I mean, honestly, just follow me on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Cammy Arvales and I'm Not posting regretted. everything. Trust me, you, it is a great decision. Do you know that Vanessa Hudgens follows you? Yes, I do. <laughs> I so saw cute. that and I was like, my jaw dropped and I was like, why am I pressed? I'm not her. But I was just like, oh my God. Oh yeah, she's really sweet. So she actually hit me up because she was she's wanted a pole lesson. So that's yeah. precious. Please yeah, so I gotta I gotta I gotta um get that organized with her. But yeah, it's really cool because like I think ever since I tapped into really owning like my pole dancing and like just stepping into like I don't know the person, the version of myself I've always wanted to be like a lot of like just artists that I really like respect or admire have known for a really long time also like find that they like like what I'm doing and I'm like oh my gosh what a beautiful you know affirmation that like people I respect respect me and I'm just like that's yeah. so cool um yeah so I saw that. that's that. amazing I think that's such a powerful affirmation too right is that when you truly do what it is your heart is aligned with everything falls into place everything falls into place you don't have you, you can just flow with the universe and you don't have to force anything like flow don't force you know yes that should be on a t-shirt make merch <laughs> merch is coming next <laughs> flow don't merch, yeah buy my merch no, truth but no but when it comes i will fear not <laughs> All right, sounds good. Um, okay, and last but not least, do you have any advice for anyone who is exploring movement in general for the first time, either like um, yoga or dance? I would say just like I mean, I, I think the the main theme of this podcast today is the joy, and if for me, it's like always hold in the joy, hold in like the the feeling that makes you so happy to do it. One of my fans, and, and also like just be grateful for what your body can do because like I love the that. body is so amazing this one of my favorite um like sayings of all time is gratitude is the simplest form of joy i have never heard that you know really oh i think you would love it because i also like my other thing that i love is like attitude of gratitude i always you know try and yeah. yes that is yes! Right in my intro in my first episode i say I navigate life with an attitude of gratitude. Girl, I'm we all the same alignment. Alignment. That's alignment. crazy. That's so amazing. Wow. So yeah, it really do be attitude of gratitude for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and just like gratitude is the simplest form of joy. Like when you're grateful for something, like there's joy in that. Like gratitude is like thanks. It's appreciation. It's like it's joy in a way. Yeah. I, maybe not always. I guess you could debate against that. But for me, I think about that quote all the time, like joy and gratitude being intertwined, and it just makes life so much more meaningful. I love that. Wow. Well, thank you all so much for listening. Thank you, Cami, again for joining. Yay! Of course, my pleasure. Yay, I'm so glad. I hope you all enjoyed it. Follow Cami. All of her info and pages will be linked in the description as well as I just launched the Instagram specifically for the podcast. So if you follow me, I'll promote it. Follow that page as well. It's Love X Light Podcast on Instagram. Um, I will be, you know, linking her and all of those things. And thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a beautiful day, life, month, whenever you're listening to this. And without further ado, love and light, beautiful people.